paint with Josh. We're going to paint with Josh. We're going to paint with Josh. We're going to paint with Josh. Into my heart. See, my soul shines brighter when your painting show starts. Paint with Josh into my brain. Come on, guys. Get excited. It's Thursday. What's happening, everybody? Man, I love this song anyway. What he painted last night left you sleeping in your bed. You were dreaming, but you should have painted with him instead. I'll paint with Josh. Before you go, go, cause he's not planning on painting solo. Oh my god, you guys, I'm gonna write some lyrics to this one. I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys. Welcome to the show, everybody. What's going on? <laughs> it's Thursday, it's my Friday, actually. And I am just wired, just wired. Took a good long nap, and uh, now I'm ready to go. How's it going, everybody? Tell me where you're watching from. Where are you from, sir? Madam, how about you? So, we've got our giant, giant canvas. Let's calm down, Josh. Take a couple breaths. <laughs> so, you guys can tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? <clears throat> it's going to be fan-freaking-tastic on this one. Big, giant, 24 by 36 inch canvas. And you can see what we've done so far. We've covered the entire thing in Bob Ross Liquid Clear. The whole canvas, nice and wet. And then we took our crimson and our two blue colors and just sort of mushed them all over the whole thing, getting it every single possible where you can think to get the paint, right? You got to have paint all over the canvas if you want it to shine like our little technique when we go and hit it with the white, right? So let's wash that brush off. Remember, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? It's the weekend. My weekend anyway, I don't know about you guys. Mine starts today. Well, it's actually, it's my weekend from my, my quote unquote real job where I go and clock in, but it's my Monday for painting day. So let's get ready for a good week. It's my weekend is my, I work the week. See what I, you guys don't, you, nobody gets me. Nobody gets me. All right, now, as you can see, giant canvas. This one's number 861. I think I put it in the title of this one. 861, and if you go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, you'll be able to find this painting, among other paintings. If you type in the word TikTok or type in the word, uh, type in the number 861, and you'll find that guy right there. Now, we're gonna go with some awesome Aurora Borealis tonight. So, let's get our fan brush out, right? Our little drumstick smash down on the canvas. We're going to go through our white only. I'm going to show you right here, just through the white. All you need to do, getting a fair amount of it onto the brush because we're going to make a big long streak through the sky and make our auroras. It's going to be gorgeous. It's going to be gorgeous, guys. Okay, so tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? It's going to be fantastic. Let's take this paint right here and just decide, who knows? Just Oh, look at all those colors light up all differently. All depending on where you put your undercolor, right? Still got some color on that brush, so let's take this guy over here and go right down there. Oh, wicked. Just wicked. Maybe this last guy, he went off the canvas. He didn't even, he didn't even barely get to be in the party, right? He's like, oh, I was late. Late to the party. Just so cool, though, what you can do with a little bit of paint on the canvas. That's our P1, right? The first P of Paint with Josh. Now, the second P of Paint with Josh is going to get you a follow if you know it. So what's that second P? It's the amount of what that we push on the canvas with. What do we call that second P, guys? What's happening, Wanda G? What's going on, guys? Pressure, Hypnotic Beauty was the first one I saw. So we're gonna pin her comment. Everybody go follow Hypnotic Beauty. for saying pressure, right? So we're gonna take our brush and come over here, push real hard. And it drags up just a little bit, right? Woo! The harder you push, the more it's gonna drag up like that especially if we add a little bit more paint, right? So it's not going very far. There's not a lot of paint up there on the canvas, even though it looks like there might be. There isn't a whole lot, and that white shines so brightly on a black canvas, doesn't it? It's crazy. So let's come over here. We're going to wash off all the color off the brush and then get a little bit more of our white paint. And we're going to come in, and we're just going to dab in a few little spots, make it look all messy and weird looking, right? Just want it to be weird looking. You know, all these little things. You can even take this guy all the way off the side if you want. Doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter where it goes. Drop a couple little bits in there, a few little extra bits out there, right? Just wherever. Because all it's going to do is extend wherever you have a little bit of that white paint. Now, we're going to come in again with that same pressure. Push them up like that, right? Oh, gorgeous, guys. Gorgeous, right? Let's take the brush, and instead of having it flat on the canvas like this, let's turn it like this, right? And then go straight up through the thing right there. 
Turn it again to match it, go straight up. Bam, 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 bam. Get all these gorgeous little bits. Come down just a little, as teeny, as tiny, as little bit. Ooh, it's fantastic. All right, the more you push, the more it's gonna streak, especially if you got more paint on your brush down there like that, right? So why don't we get a little, a couple of those right over here. Just a couple little extra bits of white paint onto the brush. Then same brush, haven't washed it, haven't done anything. Right, you get that more paint on there, it's gonna streak up further. All right, let's hit this guy, bang, like that. Bang, look at that. All the way up through, just pulling straight up though. Straight up, just like that. Come down a little bit, softening them, just a little touch, right? These guys over here, it doesn't even matter much because there's gonna be a whole giant mountain in the way. But if there wasn't and you wanted to just fade it off into nothing, look at all those colors, guys. <whistles> Chef's kiss right there. Fantastic. Just love it. Those are fire. Those are fire and a half. Somebody bring some water. Oh, it's okay. We might paint some. It's all right. Man, that looks good. Love those undercolors. Now we're going to go back. We're going to wash off our white brush. Get all the paint off of that little fan brush. And then we're going to come back and load it up with some clouds. It gets to be awesome. Awesome, right? Gonna come through any little bit that you wanna hide or wherever, right? I wanna take a little bit, you gotta push some of it back. I don't wanna hide all of our little bits of our auroras, but you have to kind of put a few of them just a little back there, hide that little bit of darkness, right? It's our first dark separator we're gonna talk about. Oh, the dark separators. Remember that term for later on, dark separator. So all it is, is the little piece of darkness from the, where the two bright areas are going to start to come and touch each other, right? That's where you put that dark separate. You got to have a little bit of dark over there. Now, I'm going to have to cut in front of you guys just to come around the side, make these gorgeous little things, just having our little bit of color over there. Now, right here, all depends on our pressure. We put a bunch of paint up onto the canvas, right? So depending on how much we pull on that paint, that depends how far it's going to extend down. Look at all these colors start to show through, you guys. Oh, it's fantastic. All depends on where, look at that, leave that little, little dark separator back in there. You can see, and then watch, if you come over here like this, and you take a bit of more, a bit more of our white paint, kind of dab it up into that guy, right? And then soften him down a little bit, just so lightly. Now a little bit brighter cloud popping up in front of our rower. Don't want to cover everything, obviously, but fantastic, guys. Right, the more of this color that we drag down, the more we can extend it, bringing it down, adding more and more and more and more and more depth to the clouds, just from having those little bits of excess white that was on our brush. And look, that's not white, right? It's, it's a very dark color, but even that dark color is dragging some of that white with it and kind of lighting up everything else underneath it. It's really, really cool, guys. Really cool. Oh, we could so put a lightning bolt right off in that really bright area right here. So put a lightning bolt right there. I think we should do that. We should do that, but let's figure out what our mountain's gonna look like first, because I wanna put a gigantic sized mountain in this one. Just a ginormous one. So we need to mix up a little bit of our dark paint. You guys know the shadow that we like to make up, right? Which three colors do I use to make my shadowy color? Can you guys tell me in the comments? Which three colors do we use to make up a little bit of a shadow? All right, can you guys tell me? Let's see, who's got it right? Who's got it right? Let's see, pop, 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 red, oh, not red, not red. Crimson, black, and blue, there goes Hypnotic Beauty. She has come to class to learn today, guys. She is coming to learn today. So we mix up our blue, our crimson, and our black, right? Red, way over here, super bright red. This looks red, but it's not, it's crimson. It's very deep, dark red. So we're gonna mix up all those colors like that. And remember, the more questions you answer correctly, the more follows you get. We pin your comments for answering questions correctly. I'll give you a follow if I'm not following you already, if you answer a question correctly. I think I only follow like 550 accounts, something like that. There we go, guys. We're going to come in here. We're going to scrape up the largest amount of black paint you've ever seen and come up and just uh, start covering over some bits of our, of our aurora. Just dump it on there. Got to have a bit. Got to throw some of our little bits of our clouds back and hide different things and just way up in here. Why not? Who cares how big it gets, right? I don't know, you might not be able to see it way up there in the darkness, but it's okay. We'll come back and highlight it very soon. And take more of that dark paint, just covering over, really smushing it and dragging it and pulling it hard. All right, gotta pull it down hard. Where do you want it to live? That 
far away little mountain. Woo -hoo, guys, that's gonna be fantastic. I can already see it in my brain. I can already see what it looks like, okay? Just mushing that color on there, bam, just like that. Now we're gonna take our brush and we're gonna extend that bit of paint, right? We put our first pea of paint with Josh, that paint. We're gonna use our second pea of paint with Josh, pressure, right? Now what's the third pea of paint with Josh? Maybe Hypnotic Beauty might let somebody else answer what the third pea of paint with Josh might be, right? Just maybe. And then I'm gonna show you just a few little things. Practice Carlos Viagra, Viagara, I think that's it. There you go. Couldn't pin the comment. Oh, that sucks. All right, well, the next one I saw was Secret of the Glyph. Pin this comment. There we go. Everybody go follow Secret of the Glyph for knowing just a little bit about what we're talking about here. Now, just, in, just to show you where the bottom of our mountain is, let's come in and add just a little bit of white underneath just to show the bottom, right? So what we'll do is we'll make a little We'll make a little bit of cloud out of that, and then it'll give us a little bit of backdrop to show you where the bottom of the mountain's coming out of, right? There we go. It gets very dark in these dark scenes before you start adding your highlights, right? There we go. A little bit of soft little cloudy mist, and you can tell where the bottom of our mountain is, right? Again, we're not having it all the same length or height or whatever. All this got to be like a, like a crazy little bumpy road, a little country road out there, right? Now, we're going to come in over here. Let's mix up a bit of our blue, all right? Take a bit of blue. A lot more white than we had blue because the blue is so powerful. Look at that. Instantly going to want to turn it like deep, dark blue. So we want to make it like a sky blue color and then take a bit of our purpley blackish color that we had and mix that in. And we're going to get this softish grayish, like just little sort of like a stormy blue color almost. All right now we're going to decide where our bit of light would hit. Where was the top of our mountain? We get to, to pick what it looks like, how far it goes down just by putting on our, our highlights and stuff, right? So before we get too far ahead, let's come soften this guy over here. All right, depending on our pressure with our one inch brush, we can pull this guy down like this. Maybe this guy has a little flat edge that goes this way, right? Or it comes down over here, or it's like that. And maybe that side comes down. It's got this whole bit over here. You can start to pull it into that cloud and extend it down. And now you've got a ridge on this side and a whole ridge on that side of the mountain. And like I said, we'll go highlight it and make it look all neat and stuff. So I'm finish this bit and cover over these little bits of shadows. Watch how they disappear. All right, just shaping our mountain down just like that. Gorgeous. Okay, now we're ready for some stuff. Go back into our little blue, and scrape it up. Remember guys, if you want this painting, it's available for sale at paintwithjosh.etsy.com and it's number 861, 861. We'll take this guy like that, start throwing our little bits of mountainy snow down the side of the mountain, off the backside, all right? Maybe there's a little bit, who knows, just in the back side over there, you know, off the back of this little peak on there, get this little valley, right? You can start to decide what you want it to look like all based on you. You know what I mean? You get to choose what it looks like. Maybe there's a bit of shadow in there, maybe a bit over there, who knows? Maybe this guy connects in, all depends on what you want, right? And you can always go back and cover over it. Now, let's mix up a bit of our white, right? And scrape it up a bit of our white, one little scrape of blue, because you don't need a whole bunch of blue, right? We've just shown that, that the blue will really take over. And we don't want it to be the purest of pure whites way out in the distance. So we're going to make this super bright, super bright blue color, right? It's going to look pure white to you guys, especially when we come up here and we take it like this and we start to decide where our bit of snow is going to lay and we start pulling on it, right? Come up here, grab a couple bits, let it grip, and then just slide it down. Letting it all fall off certain ways, different things over here, over there, right? Come out a little bit further, change your direction. Do all sorts of stuff. Come in there like that, just off the back side. There we go. We're not gonna have all sorts of light back down in here into our shadowy side, right? We're leaving all these dark areas and different blue areas that we had put in there because we don't want it to all look the same, right? And the more you go over your cool little breaky bits, the more they're gonna disappear, so up into here, sliding it down right under there, just like that. Lightest, teensiest, tinsiest little bit of pressure you can possibly get, and then move quickly, right? And that's the secret. Move it down fast. The faster you go, the more it's gonna break randomly like that, right? The slower you go, it's gonna be like trying to, I, I don't know, that would be incredibly hard to try to mush it on slowly and be like, okay, we're gonna go, see what I mean? It doesn't really break. It's just very much the same all throughout the thing if you try to do it slowly, right? I'll scrape that guy up like that, come down here. 
throw it off and it's more random and everything is a little bit different. Right, very cool. We'll go back and fix that spot anyway. It's all good. It's all good. Swinging it down, shooting it down off the mountainside. And that looks cool. That looks cool. What if we came over here, right? Had a little bit of our light sneak up over here. You can do whatever you want to do, guys. You can have it come in there. There could be a whole little bit of a another ridge right there. Watch this. Come in like that. Drop our bit of light down. And then if we're going to have a bit of light over there, you got to have a bit of shadow off the back side. Right? So I'm dropping our little bits of shadowing back there. Some very cool little things. Very cool. Hey, just like that, guys. Very neat, right? Now let's come back in. We need to make up a little bit more of our white snowy, snowy color with our blue and white mix. We don't want it to be too bright white, right? And we don't want it to be too blue either. So, gotta go back at it. Josh never makes up enough color the first go around. I don't know why. Don't ask why. Bring these guys down. It's all about the amount of paint that you have on your knife, right? The amount of pressure that you're pushing down on the canvas. And what's that last P, guys? Watch this, we're gonna connect these two little things like this. Bringing them down like that. It's your whole little ridge to just build itself from nothing, right? You get to decide what it looks like. Does anybody know the third P? Third P of Paint with Josh, gonna get you a follow over here if you can answer correctly. Let's see, first person I see. Third P is practice, it's me. It's me is gonna get pinned right there and they're gonna get you a follow. Everybody go follow It's Me and we're all gonna have an awesome time. All right, gonna scrape this up. Last little bit into there. Right, the white down here at the bottom is only really used for making our fog and stuff. It's all we really need it for. So let's go in like that, taking our two inch brush. And I'm gonna dab it off on a paper towel so it's nice and sort of clean, just like that. Thank you for all the roses. I just saw the roses on the screen. Love you for that. So we're gonna take a two inch brush just like this and come in here very lightly and just start swiping up, right? We're using such light pressure that look, there's barely any paint on the brush when we come down to touch into the dark area because we're touching it so softly. Oh, just three hairs and some air. Bob was not kidding. When he said that, he was not joking around. Three hairs and some airs is all you get. And that takes a lot of our third P, which is practice, which is why I asked you guys because it takes a lot of practice to be able to, to mush on that paint and not push it so hard that you smash it and, and take it everywhere, right? Very softly. And we're using a very thick, dry paint. It's not just your normal paints you can go get at the store. These are the Bob Ross paints, the Windsor & Newton paints, the Gamblin 1980 paints, those ones that are super thick and dry. They don't come out the tube oily. There we go. A couple little bits. Take our darker, shadowy bit back in here. Just few, add a few little dark sections, wherever there may be a bit of darkness, right? Look at that. Oh, guys, so cool. So cool. Now, we added that paint. Let's just go back over it a couple more times, soften it down. You can see we're coming from another direction because we didn't go this way when we did this. We went this way, right? So you have to go the opposite of what you did. Otherwise, you're really going to mess it up. Okay, now we're going to come in here. Same brush. Pop it over here. And just start tapping, right? Start tapping it down. This canvas is so big, it's shaky, right? Come up into our snow, start tapping it down, the littlest bit, right? That's why I told you, the bits at the bottom, we don't really use for, for the, it, all it is, we need to get a little bit of that white color, right? So we come grab up in here, and the more that, you're, that you grab, and the more that you push, the more you can extend your bit of mountain all the way down, very cool, right? The more you do, the more you do. Now, you don't, I never want it to be just a straight line all the way across. So I kind of start up a little bit higher. I work my way down. Maybe we come up, we go down and go up again. All depends on what you want yours to look like. But if it's just straight across, Bob always said that it looked like somebody came in with a razor and just chopped the top of your trees off or whatever. You know what I mean? So don't make it be straight. And it would be all nuts and crazy. I think of it like a heart monitor. It goes up and down and up and down all throughout the whole mountain, right? Very cool. Now, again, just coming in, tapping in, bashing it into the canvas, having the whole thing shake on us like it's gonna fall out of the easel, right? Bringing down that bit of fogginess. People go, how do you paint the fog? You don't really, like the brush does it for you. You just kind of tap at it. <laughs> just tap at the sucker, it'll paint itself. There we go. Now you can come in here, making the same way we did our little bit of clouds up there, just very light pressure. And if you want it to be a bit brighter, right, you can always go back and add in a bit more 
fog or, or white paint like we did with our clouds. It'd be very cool. Now, before we get too far away, let's go put a lightning bolt on this sucker way back here. It'd be awesome. So we're getting a little bit of our liquid white onto the brush and pop a little white dot right into the brightest spot of that cloud right there. Just a white dot of our liquid white on from our liner brush. Now, why don't we take our little white dot and let's start rolling it this way, twisting the brush, moving it back and forth, right? Jiggling it, being all crazy. Got to get more paint on the brush. It's starting to go a little, little bit. This brush is like hard on the end anyway. We don't need that brush. We need a new brush. There we go. Oh no, this brush is hard on the end too. It's all right, we're gonna make it work. All right, so we're gonna come down, we're gonna connect with our little bit. All about the pressure. All right, where is it gonna come down? Is it gonna go off behind the mountain? Is it gonna come down and hit your mountain and have like a little explosion of, of, uh, of snow, like pop it off like that? Because it could, it could do that if you wanted it to. All right, now we're gonna take our one inch brush because it's much smaller and we're going to go get at that little guy. We're going to start making little things. And as soon as we touch it, it's going to want to disappear. So you got to be very, very light, right? Couple little swipes, just like that. Ooh, just light it up just enough. Oh yes. Just enough to where it looks like the lightning has lit up that cloud, right? As it come out in that very bright spot, just like that. Fantastic. Fantastic guys. Fantastic. So, this red, white, and blue painting is available for sale if you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. And what's really neat, you guys don't even know what I've got planned for it. Now, normally we either do a mountain or we do a seascape. This one's gonna be a mashup of both. Oh, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. We're gonna have a big mountain and then a giant crashing wave seascape down here. It's gonna be fantastic. Little things, little bits, going down. Very cool, guys. Okay, now that's bright enough, I would imagine. That looks very neat. Got our shadowing and our mountain looks awesome. Let's take a second. We're gonna wash the brushes off. So if you've never seen how we wash the brushes, I'm gonna show you on the first brush how we do it. And then I'll wash the rest of them because I can do it a lot quicker if I'm doing it by myself. Hey, okay, so just put some new thinner in our glass jar, right? You don't need a glass jar. I just use it so it's see-through and you guys can see it, right? We take our brush, we're gonna go, you can see, it's about filled up right here. We're gonna go just about a quarter inch into the, the paint thinner and then twist it. Look, oh, look at all that come out. Get all that stuff out. Now you lift your brush above the level of the water or the, the thinner, right? Twist it, twist it, twist it. And it, what it's doing is shooting more thinner around the edge of the glass and having it fall back in, right? Or your cup or whatever. Now we shake it off. Sometimes three, four, five, six, seven, eight times until you stop hearing the coming out of it into your trash can, right? So you shake it off and then you go into your bucket. Now, if you don't know what the bucket looks like, this is the old beater bucket, right? It's a five gallon bucket with a golf ball basket buried into the bottom of it. And it's the most nastiest golf ball basket you've ever seen. So it's four years old, that golf ball basket's been getting paint on it for a long time. So tell me what you're watching from guys. What's your favorite sandwich? Got to beat the devil out of it. That's right. That's right. Okay, let me finish washing these brushes off. We'll do it real quick. If I don't have to show you guys, I can do it very quick. There we go. Now, we'll get this bigger one over here. Bop, 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 bop. Shake it off into the thing. Beat the devil. We're getting the devil just beaten out of it today. Now, especially on the two inch brushes, always go dab it on a paper towel. Let me show you what it sort of looks like. All right, if I have my, I've got my paper towel on my table, right? So my hand is my table. The paper towel rests over the edge of my table like that, so it can bend down. And that way I can hit the brush like that, right? About halfsies, and we hit the brush into the table a bunch of times. And then you can see, look at, there's blue coming off of it still, still. So. Always dab them off, and that's what we do on, and we're just, sounds like somebody's knocking at the door. Don't worry, it's not delivery. I haven't had dinner yet. We're gonna get dinner after this. I'm starting to get hungry, really starting to get hungry. So make sure your brush is sorta of dry. It doesn't have to be perfect. Look, there's still thinner in the brush, right? So it doesn't have to be super 100% dry, but 
dab it off on a paper towel just to make sure. Especially if you're going to put them away for the night. And you're not going to use them anymore. You're not going to paint anymore. Definitely. Definitely dab them and dab them and dab them and make sure they're clean and dry. Dry is the big thing. Okay. Now, guys, let's see. I'm going to freaking put the biggest, awesomest wave you've ever done did seed right here. Oh, it's going to be so cool. Let's pop some stars in there, too. Got to have some stars if we're going to have a big old aurora sky like that. So let's get a little of our liquid white, right? Same thing that we use to make our lightning bolt with. It's very runny. Watch this. It'll like flip out and, and drop out of the brush because it's like a, like a very, it's like a white syrup. You know what I mean? Not super thick syrup, like kind of runny, milky syrup. Very watery, cheap restaurant syrup. You know what I mean? You go to a cheap restaurant, you pour it on your pancakes, and it's like, it's like oh, gee, I, I, maybe I shouldn't have had that. That kind of watery syrup. So it's, uh, it's definitely not like our thick oil paints that won't come off the canvas, right? This stuff, if you had enough of it in the pile, would drip down. So now that we've got some in our brush, we're basically going to take it and drag all the bristles across the tip of the palette like that and flick them. So they're going to bend backwards, and then they're going to flick and launch paint at the canvas, right? So little bit. Don't want to have a whole lot. Otherwise, you're going to have like a really big, bright splotch of stars. And that's not what you want. A little bit. We start tossing them off from about eight inches to a foot away from the canvas, right? I'm not right up here on it, right? We're not, we're not way up here close. We're about eight inches away. And that'll kind of toss them out lightly. And then you can sort of judge literally like maybe 10 swipes. And sometimes I don't even hit the palette. I go like this and I don't even hit it because I'm trying to do it so lightly. There we go. Just get enough, you know what I mean? Just to fling out. Just like that. Get these wicked awesome stars, guys. Just more stars than you could ever paint. You'd be here for 10 years trying to paint all them stars if you were doing it by hand. Very cool. All right, now let's come in with our seascape. And then the best part about it is after we finish this whole thing, we're going to do that same little star technique down here in our crashing water. And it's going to look like watery spray coming off of the canvas, guys. Oh, it's going to be cool. So save your little brush. You got to have like a little stiff brush. Like, you know how the, the um, you know how they're when they're, a little bit shorter. They're more stiff in the bristles. They're, they have like more flickability when you bend it back and it flicks forward harder versus a bigger one that's a lot softer, right? So get your brush with a, with a good bit of flickability. And you guys start telling me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? I'm going to give you some shout outs right here. I got to take a drink real fast. Jeez. Been talking nonstop for, I don't remember how long. Mm. Snowy mountain under the Aurora Borealis sky. I dig it. North Carolina. Watch it from Saudi. We got the UK, upstate New York. We got Iowa, North Carolina again. Let's see. Classic PB&J. We got Texas, Idaho, Oregon. Hey, from Ontario, Canada, Colorado. I'm a good teacher, bro. Thanks. I appreciate that, bro. Appreciate that, bro. Arkansas, Long Island, Minnesota, root beer float. Oh, my God. It's been ages since I had a root beer float. L.A., Curacao. Is that how you say that? Curacao? I think that's how you say that. Switzerland, Tennessee, Wisconsin, France. You see a cat in there. Where do you see a cat? Where do you see a cat? Minnesota. Hey, from Florida with a Reuben. That's a good sandwich. That is a good sandwich. All right, guys. Mm. Let's rock and roll with an ocean scene now. I'm going to get a bit of both, though. Like I said, this is how you have to wipe your mouth when you don't have time to rip one off. <laughs> like I said, we normally do a mountain and then like a bunch of trees and a waterfall or something. Or we normally do a seascape with nothing in the background, right? Now we're gonna do a bit of both on this one. So go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and search for number 861. This painting is, I think it's $749, but it's 40% off, which brings it down to 449.40, right? Poor D. 449.40. <laughs> Head over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. One of a kind, original, hand-painted canvas. Not a print. You get this exact canvas is coming to your house. And I'll even put it on the back for you. So, plus, if you buy this painting, just lastly, if you buy this painting, you get to choose the name for it. So we're going to start to, I'm going to start to ask you guys for names towards the end of the stream. And if you buy it, guess who gets to name it? You! <laughs> All right, let's come over here 
and get another fan brush out. Since we got a rock and roll, we're going to switch gears into an ocean scene now. And we're going to have it very foggy and faded underneath. It goes down very dark, right? We don't need it to be super bright. So let's get a bit of our white on the brush. Just a bit now. I don't have to have the whole thing. Doesn't have to be as thick as it was when we made anything else out here. Just a little bit, because we're just going to come in. Almost fell. <laughs> it literally was like falling back towards the phone and to get out of the way. So just a little bit on the brush, just like that. This big, there's so, many, so much room for activities in here. Like we could do some swimming in here. So when I do these big canvases, the camera has to be back so far to be able to encompass the whole canvas that there's lots of room for activities in here. So let's take our white on our brush and let's decide me off. Oh, what if we put it way back there? We had the eye over here. That'd be kind of cool. Okay, so very lightly, right? I know I want my eye on my wave here which means I need the back a little bit higher and I don't want to go all the way across. Why don't we go there? Just put the littlest bit, just like that. All right, a little bit of white, way out there, right? The base of that little bit of fog. Now all we're going to do is sort of stay underneath that white, bring it down, just right there. That's all you got to do, a little bit. Stay underneath again, drop a little section. Always leave little bits of darkness underneath your bright areas. You got to have a little dark area, little dark separator, right? Like we talked about from our bright clouds down to our darkest part of our sky and then boom, white mountain, right? Same thing here from the auroras from the brightest part to the darkest part, brightest part, darkest part, brightest part of our mountain down to its darkest part, right? So we got to have those dark areas back in our sky, little bits in our, our water too, little bits everywhere, right? Just like that. Now you want it to be a bit thicker on the one side into a very thin little point as it gets out that way, right? Thicker over here, thinner over there. It would very cool. Now, no matter how much you fill up your brush with paint, right? Look at that. Uh-oh, I got people over in the Etsy store. I think somebody might be trying to get this one. If you want it, you better over hurry up and go get it, right? So no matter how much you fill up the paintbrush, right? You can see all the white in there. We're only really using the bits on the top. We're just using the tip. We're not using the rest of it, right? So no matter what, if you fill it all the way down to the squeezy bit, whatever this piece is called, I always forget what it's called, but you don't need to fill it all the way up because we're only ever using really the tip. Just think about that. You're like, oh man, I, I go through so much paint. Like, why am I wasting so much paint? You're overloading the brush, right? Overloading. We're overloading the system. That's why paint is the first P of Paint with Josh. How much paint are you putting in the brush? How much paint are you putting on the canvas? And then how much pressure are we pushing on it, right? So we can blend it out. Now, speaking of pressure, let's take our one inch brush. We're gonna push on this with a fair amount of pressure. Just sliding it across. And it nice and soft, leaving our little bit of our little, it's almost like a little white cap out there. Kind of cool with that shadow underneath it, right? Now let's go back into our white. Because again, all of our under colors are already here. The blue, the crimson, the purple, the blue over here. I, 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 I literally went nuts, right? You can see already. I had phthalo blue, I had Prussian blue, I had crimson with Prussian blue, and then phthalo blue with crimson underneath. And I was just constantly mixing all three of the colors all over the canvas. So it's gonna show up like this right down here. Oh, it's gonna be fire. So again, if you wanna get this painting, head over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Search for 861 or just type TikTok in the, uh, in the search bar, when you get over to my store, you type the word TikTok and it'll pull up all the paintings that we've done on TikTok. Now, let's grab this guy right here. We're gonna come down and make our little mustache shape. So you gotta come down and then up and then down again, right? Little mustache, like the Monopoly man, like mine. It's about the only part I can actually grow facial hair on, right? This is not very thick, but like the mustache, I could get, I could, I could be like Tom Selleck, be like Josh Selleck. Paint with Josh Selleck up here, right? Magnum P Blue, no. <laughs> Here we go. And then slide this little bit of white just off the back, right? Get a little bit brighter on the back of the wave. It doesn't have to go back all the way. Now we need to make a bit of brightness in between these two bits, right? But we don't want them to touch, obviously. I don't want to have them touch. So got to have a little bit of paint on the brush and then let's decide maybe in like literally directly in between them. And then we'll just have a little bit of change back there. A little bit of sheen on the water, whatever you call it, right? It's not the same all throughout the wave. That's what we want. We don't want it to be the same thing all throughout the wave. 
Otherwise, we don't, we just have a, a, a very, very, very bright colored, we're just going to have white, right? If we just keep adding and adding and adding and we're, nothing is different, it's just going to be a white bit at the bottom. That's not going to look like a uh, wave. Not to me anyway. So we're going to come back in here very lightly, softening it out. That's Bailey's iPad going crazy. Soften it out, bringing it over to the edge, going around the side of the canvas. Now we're going to come up, down again very lightly going over these guys so we don't blend them all away. So we have all those cool little things, right? Now let's come in and decide. We could put a giant old crasher right in there. Have lots of wet sandy like reflections. It's gonna be really cool. Or you can add more bits of wave, right? You can have another little set of ocean wave, you know, coming in another line of water, a couple of little mustaches, right? We could do another little mustache right here. But then that's gonna push our wave over to this side, we're gonna, no, all right, here we go. Let's take all this white, all right? We're gonna load it up a bit more than we just did, because we wanna have it go for a little bit longer on the brush without blending all the way in, right? So a bit more, a bit thicker on the brush. Now we're gonna come in and let's say our wave come up like this. Boom, just right over the top of our horizon. It's gonna be wicked. Come down like that, but we don't need to go very far, not for this guy. We're gonna hit over here. We're gonna have a little uh, pivot point, point, Bam, X marks the spot over here, guys. I'm gonna ask you about this point later on. I call it a pivot point, pivot point, right? Remember that, because that's gonna get you a follow when we come over here to do the wave. And we went up like that, got our pivot point all set up. We've got our water coming down, right? Now we need to start flicking it back, but we don't just wanna go directly at an angle. You gotta kind of slide it back with the wave, help the water feed itself to the side and then back. Get me into the side and then back. And these big canvases, they like to shake on you. So if you're ever working on one that's kind of big and it's like moving, right? Find the center bar right there. Push with your brush into the center bar of the canvas and now it'll be nice and taut and you won't leave a fingerprint and you're not gonna hurt the canvas, right? We'll go back like that. Told you we'd line up with that little spot right there, right? Our little pivot point right there. And now from our pivot point, we need to start to pivot. Imagine that, coming back to the same spot, right? Same spot, no matter what you do, go back to that same exact spot right there. And then this one, it's gonna slide down. That becomes the face of our wave. It's gonna look really cool. Now, leave a little bit of darkness underneath that guy. Start to drag him down. See how it's all blue over here? Cause we've got our blue bit and then it's gonna change. Oh, it's gonna be fantastic. Now, off the other side, right? Go in the other direction. Like that, you can start to change what you want your wave to look like. You can have it grow all sorts of ways, look at this. Literally do what you wanna do. We're gonna have it all just growing towards like it's got a big long tail, right? It's gonna be really cool. Now let's take whatever color we have left on the brush because you don't need a whole lot. I said dab it in there, right? Just a little bit of color. So it's gonna mix in with whatever colors underneath it. And then we're gonna go back and soften everything down. It's gonna be really cool. All right, so we're gonna take this guy. We talked about our dark separator up in the clouds, in between the mountain and the cloud, in between the clouds and the water, right? Got our dark separator there, next dark separator. So we gotta have one in between this bit of color too. You can't have them touch together. All right, so we're gonna push it upwards, a little bit. And we stop and we look and we go, okay, that looks good. Let's go over to this side and just a little bit. Whew, just the teeniest, tiniest bit. Get it up close to that little bit of darkness, right where our next bit of white line comes in. And now, once we've gotten it as close as you want, then you can start to extend your bit of eye just by making it, making our little circles, like our clouds, right? Just like that. Just like that. Now, let's come in and grab a bit more of our uh, white on the brush with a little bit of crimson, and we're going to drop it in just like that. Gorgeous, you guys. So, coming in here very lightly, right, we'll keep it a little bit brighter. The more you mix it, the more it's gonna mix in with the color underneath. So if you want it a bit brighter, just mix it less or add more paint, less pressure, right? Just like that, guys, very cool. Now let's wash off that brush and we'll start throwing this wave together because you're looking at it right now, like I, it just looks sort of familiar. I don't know what's really going on. It kind of looks cool, but I'm confused. Don't worry, I'm gonna piece it all together for you right now, right? Gonna piece it together. And then someone's gonna buy this sucker. I can feel it. I can feel it in my bones someone's gonna buy it. Because if not, I'm taking it down to the gallery and I'm hanging it up. That's what we're gonna do. Because this one is gorgeous. Just gorgeous, guys. Okay, we're taking a bit of our 
paint, right? We're going to extend it right down there and then just start to drag it from the line back into our bit of color so we don't have that bit of darkness. I don't want to have too much paint, obviously. You know, all these little colors and little differences. Oh, it's fantastic, you guys. Just fantastic. Right, very softly with the one inch brush because it wants to grow back and get rid of our little dark separator. Right? And the more that you push, the more it's gonna slide. And we're gonna come over here. Now we're using more pressure. Right? I wanna use more. I wanna drag it off to the, the side of the canvas, following our same little angles, right? Those angles are most important, most important. Now, again, you can come over here, swiping down. And what does that look like to you guys, right? Just a different, like we're looking down on this right here, right? Our little mustache shape. So as you come up, go down that way, come up, go down that way, right? They have to match those little things. Got to match just like these ones up here. We're just looking down on it, right? I've figured out how to do both, how to look out and how to look down and have it make it look set, uh, have it look like it makes sense. Whatever I was thinking. <laughs> All right, now let's wash that brush off. Let's get in some white paint. It's gonna be fantastic, you guys. All right, now that we got that area, we're gonna get to load the sucker up like this. And whatever we're gonna go across is what it's gonna change into. So, bit of our white onto the palette, onto the brush. Start to tap it in like that. We're gonna work it over. I sort of want the shape of my wave to be like that, right? Just a little arc. Just a little, it's not, it's not too sharp. It's not a point, right? Not our little mustache up here. We're going to come from this side and just very lightly start pulling over like that. Get longer and longer and longer as we go. You see the colors change into a little different. We got our bit of white where it was brightest, where our white water is going to be crashing over. Then it got a little blue, a little crimsony purple and more purple as it went down and down and down, right? Getting all of the colors onto the brush mixing in at all times. Anytime we're touching it, it's mixing in. So anytime we go back up and touch it, we're gonna have to go back and leave some more white paint. But as we rock it down, see how the brush is way over here now? We're not holding it at the same direction, right? I'm not, I'm not like a robot. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, beep, right? No, you gotta have that rotation. Have that rotate that sucker. Woo, Nelly. Now, I got told recently that my waves look like hearts and i was like you're 100 percent right they do look like hearts let's get this and i'm gonna show you get that all cleaned off because anytime we're going across all that thick paint it's just going to contaminate the white all right so you want the white to stay bright and to show the colors you got to go back and clean the brush every so often back in here a little bit more all right let's go back we're going to pop on a little bit on the top and then it's going to get darker and darker and darker just automatically as it works in. Right? The more we touch it, the darker it's going to get as it falls down. So if we want it to remain bright on the top, we're touching it with less pressure and more paint on the brush, right? Just like that. Now, I load up the whole brush like we had it before. Now we've got to turn our angle. So instead of holding it on this side, we're going to rotate the handle. So now it's back behind my arm like a robot hand, right? Me, <laughs> Now we've got to throw it off. This one, we kind of threw in like we were holding a cup down here. We're like, okay, I'm going to fill up the cup, let it fall into the cup over here. This one, our cup's going to have to be over here, catching all of our stuff, right? So we're going to come down. We're going to leave our little dark disconnect, which is that spot right there. So we're going to turn and make a little V shape in that darkness right there, right? And all we did was touch the canvas and push the wave off. Now, the further you go out, right? And you come back to that same what? What's that spot called right there, guys? What's that spot? I told you I'd give you a follow. I talked about it right over here, right? So what's that thing called? Pivot point, Quentin Keen. Gonna pin this comment. Oh, it can't be pinned. What the crap? All right, let's see if we can follow Quentin then. A, a, a private account. Don't answer questions if you got a private account. Come on, we wanna, we wanna follow you. That's the point, right? So let's come back here to our pivot point. He's correct. We're going to come back. We're going to touch the same spot, shoot it outward. Same spot, outward, same spot, out, same spot, out, same spot, out. And then you come down and all of a sudden, doesn't that start to look like a little heart shape? Isn't it the cutest? Oh my God. 
It's the cutest, guys. So, I think it proves, like, I've always said that I'm a mountain boy. Like, yeah, I don't like the beach. I don't like the ocean. I think this proves I love the ocean, right? I mean, just subconsciously, I think it proves that I love the ocean just based on my wave shapes that we paint. So, over here, we come back a little bit more white, add that bit of brightness onto the canvas, right? And then just gonna drag it a little bit. That same pivot point, don't want it to change too much. Right? The more you touch it, the more it's gonna change color. Very, very cool. Little heart-shaped waves, I love them. So neat. But look at that little dark spot right there, right? If you lose that dark spot, it's connected to our back wave. You lose all your depth. That adds so much depth in the painting, just having that little bit of darkness back there. Don't lose it, right? Now, let's decide, maybe we had our wave. I always like to say my wave comes down and you get to decide where you want it, right? You don't have to follow along all the way down here with our bit of foam. You don't have to, you could come in and cut it off at any point that you wanted to, getting rid of everything underneath, right? So don't worry about that. Let's decide, maybe the bottom came down and it hit about right there. So we're gonna start going back and forth, side to side. And look what we're gonna meet up with as we start going over, right? And then we're gonna start sliding up into our bit of waves because we're gonna have to change our direction to have it start sliding up. Oh, look at that red guy on oh, the crimsony pink with the blue. Man, that's gonna be fantastic. I can already tell you. All right, starting to slide it out a little bit longer, a little bit longer, a little bit longer. We start to build our bit of wave, right? Now, as we come back in here, our brush has already been diluted, right? It's not fully white anymore. We've touched it onto this color, so it's a little bit darker. So now, let's come back in, and we're gonna pretend like there's a little ball in here that we can't touch. So you have to start going like this, but every time you come down, that's when we're touching the canvas, and then as we come up, then we pull our brush away. So it's like this constant, like, you're going like this. It's like the weird, it's like, it's like trying to tap your head and rub your belly at the same time. It's the weirdest thing, but you can't do it. So, come in, go back before you go up, and then just make sure that you're not getting too close to here. You wanna have that dark little circle right down in there. All right, and then as we come over here to these guys, we go further and further and further and further and further as we're meeting up with our longer bit of wave out there, right? Little things, and then we go back and soften it. Always go soften it, so, hey, just like that. Guys, that's starting to look really, really cool. Really cool. Now, we let's get our bit of our, I guess we could do our crashy water section now. I guess we could do that. We're gonna get our two inch brushes. This one's so big. In our two inch brush, I'm sliding it down like that. All right, pulling it off this way. Pick up all those different colors. Now we're gonna go back and rotate the same way. You gotta just make it a little softer. Dragging the paint up, coming up here. Following those lines, just making it a little soft. That's all we gotta do. Don't overdo the dark separator, right? You can always go back towards the end and shrink it. So don't make it too small, too fast. That's the key. That's the key. Now we're gonna get a fan brush and we're gonna go back to that dark pile of paint that we created to make our whole bit of mountain section out of, all that deep darkness, right? And we're gonna come back over here, going into that darkness, and we're gonna make another dark separator. What do you think of that? Always with the dark separators, Josh. I know, I know. So a lot of paint on the brush. Now, I'm telling you, the dark separator, right, for this guy is in here, and then it rolls around, and then, oh, look, what happened? It's gone. What happened to the dark separator? <laughs> Disappeared, right? It's not as dark anyway. So why don't we take our tip corner of our brush, just like this, right? If the brush is like this, and you just put the tip, we're just using our pinky out here, just the tip. Right, I can't, I can't move my pinky without moving my other finger. Okay, there we go. Ah, just the tip of the brush, right? So imagine, just use that outside corner. That's why the brush is turned this way. Not like this. We're not using the whole bit of the brush and all the bristles all at once. We turned it and just used our pinky way out there, right? So I start to tremble. We tap little teeny tiny things right in there. Right? Tapped it in. It's a little bit like it's starting to rotate and turn over, tumultuous, right? Now, as we come in here, it's almost like we, our, our bit of dark has to be like catching up underneath this water, like you're pinching your honey's bum. A little squeeze, right? It's gotta, it's gotta come up like that. So you're gonna come up and you're gonna start tapping up into the white, right? 
So we start at the base of the white and we tapped half the brush up into it. It's even become a lighter color. You can't really tell, but it has. Now we're gonna rotate the brush over so it's nice and dark. Come down through there, bam, 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 bam. And then we decide, right? We come through and we cut off where it is. We don't have to go all the way down because the bit of it came all the way down there, right? We decide where it gets cut off of. And you start throwing it out this way. And you take your big bit of misty, foamy spray and it's coming out everywhere, right? Awesome, awesome. We'll be able to see it in a second, I promise. I promise. Right? Make sure that your shadows right here, as you're smacking into your dark, they have to remain dark, right? See, it's hitting all that white, which wants to turn them into this light gray color. That's not what you want. You want them to remain very, very, very dark, dark as possible. As dark as possible. Now we'll come back over it with the white and really light it up, have it look like water. Now, We've got to do this next part two times. I'm going to ask you guys a lot of questions. It's going to be a lot of chances for follows and different things to happen. We'll pin comments. We'll do all sorts of stuff, okay? Now, whoop, that brush just popped right up out my hand. I'm going to wash this brush off. And we're going to be doing a lot of stuff, guys. A lot of rapid fire questions towards the end. Remember, start coming up with a name for this painting. What would you think this one would be called? And, uh, if it gets purchased, you never know, the buyer might choose the name that you would put in the comments. They'd be like, ooh, that's the best name I've ever heard, right? Now we're gonna go into our liquid white again. Our big old fan brush. I'm gonna try to get up enough this time to, watch this, there we go. See how it's gonna drip, boop, it's dripping off, it's gonna drip again, boop. You can drip one more time. Ha, drip, right? It's very runny paint. Let's go into that bit of our titanium white with the liquid white, and then you can and tell when, especially when you're in person with all these bright lights and the camera and all that, it's hard to see the difference. But it's a very wet, very runny paint compared to this thick dry pile that we have up here. And don't get me wrong, that's wet as well, right? It's wet paint, sorry, wet paint. Look, it's just very dry, wet paint. Look at that. <laughs> oh, don't do that, don't do <laughs> Don't do that, Josh. Gross. Like a baby. Ooh. Let me try that. <laughs> okay, we're gonna come up here with our very wet, runny, sloppy paint. And we're gonna start tapping on the top of those little shadows, right? Just teeny tiny taps. Just like that. See how we sort of connected back to there? Now we're gonna stay on top of the shadows, covering over most of the white that's on top. That bit of white is all spray. See that? And when you smack at it with your brush, you make these cool little odd shapes that look like water to me. Right now, as soon as you get over the tip of the top of the wave, right, you only need a little piece to go up above your horizon, the little teeniest, tiniest bit. Now we're gonna start our same little tremble. Like, oh my God, how many people are watching right now? Like, oh my God, there's 1200 people watching right now. Oh, I'm so scared, right? You're trembling like this. And you start to tap. And we're gonna tap into the wave, just smacking at it. Bop, 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 right, get all those little things to start coming down. And even though it looks like we're just smashing the canvas with white paint, what are we leaving all throughout all those little bits of white, guys? What have we left throughout there? What's happening around all those little bits of white? Does anybody know? I got to wash the brush. So if you're a slow typer, this one's going to work out well for you because I got to wash the brush off. Does anybody know what's in between all those little bits of white smashed onto there? Let's see, dark separators, Jenny Crimsonham. I think it's Crimsonham. Is it Crimsonham? Did it pin the comment? There we go. Jenny Crimsonham. Everybody give you a follow. I'm going to give you a follow right here. Bang, 111 follows. Everybody go follow her, guys. She knew all the little dark separators in between all of this bit of white, right? Even though there's tons of white, all those little dark separators in there. Because you gotta have them. If you don't have them, you have no depth. We should call them depth charges. Like, you know those things they drop in the ocean, like, poof, right? Depth charges. Because if you lose them, you have no depth. It's all the same flat color, right? If this color and that color, which are very much alike, came together and touched, you'd have this long, big space that just looked like flat nothingness. And it would be horrible. Don't lose your dark separators. That's an order, right? Okay, we're gonna come in here with our one inch brush like this. Fantastic little one inch brush. 
all we're going to do is start making our little counterclockwise circles, right? And then as soon as we touch the canvas, we're going to start to move because it's going to be very, very wet and very runny. You ready? Just like this. Very, so oh, just as soon as we touch it, bam, move. Very light, such light pressure, lighter than we ever did any cloud ever. You just barely want to touch it. So, so softly. <laughs> right? So that's round one. And we're going to go back and do it again for round two. And then we get to throw paint at it at the end of the, of the paint. It's going to be awesome. Look at all those differences, though. All those dark separators. Look at how down here it starts to light up blue because we got more blue down underneath. So it starts to change from this gray color to this blue color. And then we decide what we want to look like. How far our sand went that way. By pulling it down, pulling it over, you get a little bit further, softer, a little bit of sheen. And then we're going to make it much brighter over here, guys. Ah, fantastic. All right, now these guys, you decide how far you go up, right? How far, because it can't all be like this, right? Can't all be the same. And it can't all be like this. So you have to find this happy medium in between where, okay, the water has come down and it's hit the ground and shot out. That's what all this cloud is, right? This stuff is the droplets that are coming down that haven't hit and broken up into a million pieces yet, right? They're the chunky bits. So all depends what you want it to look like, how far you go up, right? Totally up to you. Totally up to you. And then it's like, and come down and land. Slam! Okay, this is gonna be fun. All right, here comes all the questions. Who's ready to get some follows? Because Paint with Josh only follows people who answer questions from my show. I had a message one day. He said, hey, uh, I really love your art. And I was like, hey, thanks, appreciate that. And they're like, hey, would you mind following me? And I said, uh, no, I only follow people directly through the live shows when they answer questions correctly. That's when we follow fans. So don't message me and be like, hey, I have an art page. Can you do this? Can you do that? Um, uh, you know, you got to answer questions correctly on the show. So just like this, taking our two inch brush, right? I'm going to use that guy later. We're going to come in here and grab up a bit of paint on our fan brush. Nice, clean fan brush. We get a bit of paint on it. Now we've got crimson here, blue, crimson, and then purple, I think, underneath. There's a mixture of all of them. So and come in, take our big thick paint. Don't go back into that very wet, watery paint that we created this out of. Totally different. You don't want that in this next part. You want the thick paint from that dry, thick pile, like our blizzard. Our blizzard versus our milk, right? We got our blizzard up here. I'm gonna get that guy. Just like that. A little bit of paint on the end. Now, we're gonna come through and we've gotta leave what? Who knows what we have to leave in between this color and that color? I'll give it up. I'm gonna give a follow real quick. Who knows what we got to leave? Dark separator from Gainer. Pin this comment right there. Got a dark separator. And I'm going to give you a follow. Everybody go follow Gainer, right? Now, we're going to leave a dark separation, which means we can't come up and touch this white color to that color. Got to leave a little bit in between. So maybe up here. And now, do we push with a lot of pressure or do we push with a little pressure when we're dumping off this paint, right? What, do you, what would you think? A lot of pressure or a little pressure? when we're adding this paint onto the canvas right here. Trying to stay below our color, not trying to come up too close to our bit of wave over here, all right? A lot of pressure, little pressure. What do you guys think? Little, little, I dig it, I dig it. Little, little, both, there you go, both. That's what I was looking for. So that's the only time where both fawn, there you go, fawn, clayhorn, everybody will follow, or clawhorn, I guess I already followed them. So when we're doing that, it's all about you're base, you're judging it, right? How much is happening when you, you want it to sort of look like this by the time you get done. So do you have to push a little bit harder or do you have to, you have a ton of paint on the brush and you just want to be soft until you don't have any more paint on the brush and then you got to be harder. Like what, you know what I mean? It's a bit of both when we're doing this, right? Now, here comes the next most important question for the two inch brush. This is for the follow and the pinned comment, right? We have to do two things. When we do our two inch brush, we've got to do two things. Now, this one ended up looking so good, I didn't even go back for round two. It already looked fantastic like that. I'm skipping round two on that one. So we've got to do two things with this two inch brush. We have to pull down and we've got to swipe side to side with the same amount of pressure. So is it a little amount of pressure or is it a lot of pressure with this brush at this point in time 
tell me in the comments and I'll start yelling out names as I see them. Let's see. Cat Marie says a lot. Julia says lots. Heather Lynn says a little. Allie says a little. Uh, Corey says a lot. Uh, Don't Care says a little. Jeff says a little. Let's see. Jen Back on Your Feet says a lot. Ghost says both. Eh, there is no both in this one. This painting sold? What? This painting didn't sell. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it sell. So, same lots. Oh, painting is sold. All right, well, let me let me look. I'll, I'll double check. I'll double check. It's not showing in my orders here, but we'll look at it in a minute. Okay, now, we've got a lot of comments for um, little pressure, and we got a lot of comments for a lot of pressure. So I'm going to show you both ways, right? This is a little bit of pressure. I'm going to use the same amount of little pressure, and then I'm going to pull it to the side with the same amount of little pressure, right? Same amount of pressure I was using. Now, Everybody who answered, little bit of pressure, quote unquote, would you leave your sand looking just like that and walk away from the painting and be like, okay, it's on to the next step. I'm ready to go. Would you leave it looking just like that? No, hell no. No, says Sid. No, says Secret of the Glyph. Sabriel says no. Channel says no. Or maybe it was Chanel. I don't know. Esmeralda says no. Haley says no, right? No one's gonna leave it like that and walk away. So let's try the opposite and do a lot of pressure. Right? We'll come in here like this. Lots of pressure, bend that sucker down. And what's it start to look like, right? Does it look similar to anything in this whole painting? Guys, does it look similar to anything in this painting? Anything? <laughs> does it look similar? If we start going like this and we start pulling it down with a lot of pressure, pulling it down, look at that. Right? Starts looking like an Aurora Borealis up top. If you flip the, the canvas upside down, you'd be like, hey, sweet Auroras, bro. Right? I'd be like, no, no, no. It's not supposed to be Auroras. It's supposed to be sand. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to go walk out on that. That's going to hurt my toes. I'd be like, <laughs> please, please, can we go back? I don't want to stand on this anymore. Right? It's sharp. It's sharp out there. So now we've got to pull it to the side back and forth. Now we've got to do it both ways. So you can't say both is your answer. What do we do? Do we pull it away from the wave first or do we push it towards the wave first? You tell me, towards or away? Pull it away first or you move it towards first? You gotta tell me. Liz says away, Kimberly says push, Candace says away. Uh, Just be kind says away, Kimberly says push, user says towards, W says towards, Amber says away first. Dragonheart says away, Gabrielle says towards, Lisa says towards, I'm gonna show you guys both. Actually, let's, all right, no, I'll show you both, I'll show you both, right? And we're gonna use our brains at the same time. Let's imagine though, if I wanted to keep, right? We've been talking about the dark separator this whole time. So if I wanted to keep this dark separator and I took this color and I pushed it forward first, right? And then pulled it back, because we have to do both, right? So if I pushed it forward first, don't you think that dark separator is gonna instantly blend in with this bit of wave and we're gonna lose it all together, right? So what if you think if we pull it away first, right? But I'm gonna show you. We pushed it towards the thing. You're instantly gonna ruin your dark separator. You're gonna have all the color match up right there, right? Which is not what we wanna do. We wanna take it and we wanna pull it away with that same amount of hard pressure, pulling it away from the wave first, right? All the way out there, taking all those vertical strokes and pulling them horizontally. What the heck happened down here, guys? How come nobody told me about this down here? What, what is going on? What is the, you guys see this bit right here? I must've hit it with the brush at some point. It's all right, we'll fix it later, but it's just funny. Now, doesn't that look more like wet sand? Anybody? All right, doesn't that look like more like wet sand? Heather Lynn says, I'm finally right. Now look, look at how big that, I mean, that's like, that's almost two inches of separation right there. That's too much. It's too big, right? Too much. <laughs> so we're gonna come in here, and start to slide it back, you know, like, uh, yeah, those sequin pillows have got all the little pieces. They're impossible to lay on. And if you do, you have like those stabby bits in your face, right? But if you slide it over one day, you got like a blue color and you push it over the other way and it's like pink or whatever, you know, two different colors. We do the same thing here. We slid it this way and now we can slide it back. With that same thick pressure, hard pressure, right? Coming in. Look at that already, guys, right? We decide where it ends just by where we're pulling it to. And the, the shorter you shrink that dark separator, the more it's gonna make your wave look like it's sat up so it can slide across that sand, right? So bring it in, turning it 
Hold up like that. All depends on what you want it to look like. Hello, is that the noise? I think it went through now. What was that action? Holy crap, it did sell. Where is it going to? Oh, awesome. Perfect. Well, thank you for your purchase. This one came out fantastic. I agree. All right, just like that. Look at that. Oh, a little bit of our wave. Our dark separator sits it right up on top, right? So for everybody who knows, right? Down a lot of pressure, away first, then towards. So the next time I ask you, you might get it right, right? Now, if you wanted to go back and add any bits of brightness, say we wanted to get a little bit more brightness, I don't know, down in here, right? Don't lose that dark separator again. All you gotta do, pull it down. Pull it down, pull it down, but don't leave those streaks. That's the, that's the number one way I can tell you're a beginner is if you leave those streaks like that. Right? Swipe it away so they're all vertical or horizontal. And then swipe it in, all up to you, where you want to have it, where does it sit, where does it come out, how far does it go, right? You can push the whole thing back, right? We've just shifted it. We've shifted the entire thing. It was down here, and just by adding it, we can now play with our wave and go, okay, let's say a little bit of it came over here. We'll grab a bit more of our white, we'll come down into this section, right? But we don't want to pull it at the same angle as these long ones over here, right? Because it's at a different thing. So we want to pull this guy and we're going to start coming down like that. All right, you keep his little dark separation in between the deal. And slide him out, pull it out. That's going to be cool. So we're coming out at that different angle sliding down, changing it up. Oh yes, look at that pink. Guys, that's just wicked. And it's gonna look like our whole wave just wrapped around this whole sucker. Woo! That's an awesome painting, you guys. That is an awesome painting. Now, let's come back over here. And let's see, we gotta get a little bit of that kind of other color going off the other direction, right? And then we can shrink our dark separators together again. So let's get a clean, dry brush. We're gonna start dragging up from the corner. I'm gonna show you how you shrink that little dark separator. Drag it up, drag it up, drag it up, drag it up, drag it up. A lot of pressure. You wanna push the paint, pulling it up that way. Now this guy, start swiping him up. All right, pushing that darkness, light to the light, and you just keep a little teeny tiny dark separator in there, right? And that's money, right in there. You get to decide what it looks like, how much it changes, how much it goes bright, how much it's like you get that little spark of light right there. It's fantastic. Just fantastic. Fantastic. I'm gonna come over here, a couple little dabs of our water as it's starting to get all crazy. It's gonna fall over and just, just like that. And then right here, it's almost, to connect it. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I leave that little shadowy area. Sometimes it's just got to be connected. All depends on what yours looks like, right? Every time it's going to be a little bit different. Always going to be a little bit different. Oh, yes. Look at that. That is so gorgeous. So gorgeous. Like this bit of water comes up, goes off, get all these little things happening. Fantastic. You got a good one. Okay. Let's see. Come over here, shake off that old guy, right over there. Now, has the buyer come up with a name for this painting yet? That's what I want to know. Oh, it's so soft and so just like blends into nothing over here. Watch this, I told you I'd go back and fix that little spot. I'm gonna blend it in, right? And we're gonna keep blending it in until it just doesn't exist anymore. So we're blending with that dark color. Oh yeah, a little bit of sheeniness, a little bit of shininess. A little bit of ness. There we go. Gorgeousness. Ooh, guys. So cool. So cool. So cool. I'm bring this guy out a little bit brighter. Just a touch. Just a touch brighter. Keeps wanting to blend away with all the colors that we have down here. Every time we hit it with this dark brush, right? Come up like that. Every time we soften it, it wants to blend away. So. Side when yours is nice and finished. 
just like that, guys. Oh, man, that is so stinking cool. Just so stinking cool. Fix our little bit right here. Into there, bringing up our little dark separator. Just like that. You get to decide what it looks like. You all tried to buy it? No one knows what the, who the buyer is? Are they not watching the show? They have to be watching. No one's just going to go buy it randomly at a on a whim. They've got to be watching the show. Got to be in here. So, uh, I mean, I don't give out names or anything like that. Um, it is on the East Coast. And, yeah. Yeah, so, you know. Man, why did it look so bright all of a sudden? Does it look that bright this whole time? Or did it just automatically like, did it get brighter all of a sudden? Come on, lights, figure it out. This thing is so much more purpley in person, you guys. I don't know why my lights do this to me. It makes it so bright. It was in three or four carts, and then it was sold, but no cha-ching. I know, and then the cha-ching came through afterwards, and uh, that's when I checked it, so... I hope that when I'm in the frame, that at least the camera goes a little bit, and you can actually like see more of the painting. Or am I just overexposed too? I don't know. I hope it's not been that bright this whole time. Okay, let's see. Let's see. 861. Let's see, what would you like to name the painting? See if they answer. Okay, we got that. We got it all cleaned up. Let's get the family installed. We'll get the little bit of our signature on there. Clean up all the brushes. And then I've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six other canvases prepped and ready to go. Guys, if you want me to come back and do another show, I gotta get some food first. But if you want me to come back and do another show, I will. And I will come back tonight since this one's sold. We'll come back. I've got a I've got an 18 by 24 inch all black. I've got a half and half 18 by 24 inch black and white. I've got a 24 by 30, so just six inches smaller than this guy, just six inches shorter, which is a lot, ladies. It could be a big difference. And then I've got a 15 by 30 inch all black. So 15 across 30 inches tall. Um, lots of canvases we can come back and do. So let's get the family in and then we'll see if the buyer's got a name for it. And uh, if not, then we'll just have to wait until they reveal themselves or come back and write to me later. So, Ooh, what if we put the family like way down here, guys? It's like way down there. Flying low to the ocean. There we go. Wicked. And let's take the signature for this guy down here. All right, well, if we don't know what to call it, then uh, we'll just sign it and title it, and uh, I gotta get a certificate of authenticity from downstairs anyway, so this can't be right. Look at how dark it is in here now. That's not right. Is that better? That's gotta be better. At least I can see it now. I don't know what the heck's going on with my cameras. Okay, let's see. What do we got for names, guys? Start typing in a name into the comments. And uh, maybe the buyer will show up and choose your name. Just maybe. So in the meantime, I don't even need, this thing is so big and we have so much room, I can literally walk around the canvas and sign it. I literally could. I could, if I wanted to. Let's see, Salty Mountain Mist, like that. So what would you guys name this painting? Custom Lighthouse, uh, custom, Custom Lighthouse wants to know. Cosmic Lighthouse, one of my mods, uh, one of my sister wife mods, uh, wants to know, what would you guys name this, right? What would you name? Patriot Mountain? I dig that. I dig that. Trinity, Aurora's Hidden Peak. I dig that too. That's so cool. Sunken Soul. I dig that one too. That's neat. Mystic Ocean. The Sister Wives. Yeah, we've got a lot of mod. Um, all the mods are all female. I think Jeremy might still be a mod. 
Um, but all the other mods are girls that are in love with Josh. They get to be mods. So if you're in love with Josh and you want to be a mod, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Let's see, what would we name it, guys? What would we name it? Oh, here we go, we got a, we got a response. We got a response, we got a response. Let's see, I'd like to call it the Alps of the Auroras. That's awesome. Okay, let's take this down. Oh, there we go. It's all fresh and sticky. Excellent. Okay, so this one, number 861, what a beauty it turned out to be. And I'm going to have to do another one, just like it now, because uh, i got to get some inventory up for the store, uh, not for the store, for the gallery on, um, for uh, August. I'm not going to have any paintings to hang up, because everyone goes, which is a good problem to have, don't get me wrong. All right, now the title, let's see, the Alps of auroras. I dig it. Right here. The Alps of auroras. Bam. All right, so what's the date today? That's Friday the 13th, right? Friday the 13th. No, it's Thursday. It's Thursday. So we're all going to go over to paintwithjosh.com. Right. If you want to find my Etsy store, go to paintwithjosh.com. Then there's a link right at the top. If you want to find my YouTube page, go to paintwithjosh.com. If you want to go to my Facebook page, paintwithjosh.com first, right? Paintwithjosh.com, and then it'll take you everywhere. There's links all over the place to go to my Amazon wish list, my Amazon affiliate store to get your supplies, right? Uh, the TikTok, the Instagram, all these links, plus my live schedule, the when we go live every day, except for Wednesday. And, uh, Normally, you guys know that watch the live shows all the time. If we sell the painting during the live show, that usually tempts me to come back and paint some more. Is this thing going to move? It's not strapped in. It looked like it was going to try to come out. Like, ah! Oh. Why do you wear gloves, Josh? Well, I don't know, guys. I don't know, because we deal with wet paint all the time. Maybe. Maybe that's why. And what we need to do is get the top. I always forget to do this, and then uh, I have to do it later before I ship it out. If you get a bit of our kind of kind of some paint, some sort of something, you get it to cover over this bit at the top where our easel was, and then at least it'll have the same finish. You know what I mean? So you get that clear, mix it up in between, back and forth, and all we're doing is just going over it. Back and forth and back and forth. And so the whole top section has the same finish as the rest of it. All right. Okay. Now let's put that guy back up there. There we go. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Boop. Excellent. Okay. Got that there. Gonna wash this off. And then. Get ready to do another one. I got maybe I'll get some I'll get some DoorDash or something. I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave the house. Ugh. <laughs> Who wants to leave the house? I don't want to do that. Especially, yeah, I just sold this painting and you guys want me to come back and paint more, which means somebody else might buy another painting. So yeah, let's get some DoorDash. Come on, treat yourself, Josh. Treat yourself to some dash. Now, there's the next question. What do we get? You literally have anything. What would you get? You're going to order DoorDash right now, and me and you, we're going to sit down for a little one-on-one -on -one meal, right? A little date, a little Pam Josh date. What are we going to order from DoorDash, right? Because when Pam Josh goes on dates, I just go downstairs to the couch. That's my date. <laughs> I'm up here working all the time. Uh, so date is anytime I can sit and rest, right? So uh, yeah, where are, we, where are we going on our date? If we go and we're going to have some DoorDash and it's going to be delivered, we're going to be sitting down on the couch, watching TV, eating. What are we going to get? Tell me. Tell me what we're getting. Maybe you guys will sway me. What's that, Chipotle, Chick-fil-A? Oh, McDonald's, I mean, McDonald's is so terrible, but I love it so much. It's National French Fry Day, what? Tacos, sushi, I mean, sushi for DoorDash. God, that's gonna be expensive. Mm. Applebee's, Taco Bell. Oh, you don't have Taco Bell in Dubai, you poor soul. I don't know what I would do without Taco Bell. I love it so much. Taco Bell is literally my favorite restaurant ever. Let's see. 
fish because of the water. Taco, I mean, tacos are always amazing, right? When are tacos not amazing is my question. Let's back you guys up a little bit. Back you guys up, just a squeege, just a little squidge. Well, you guys have some pretty cool uh, ideas for our date night, at least as the on the, the food situation anyway. There we go, maybe you can see how much more purpley it is from this camera. Hi guys, what's happening? Oh, I did. You're right. Who is that person? I'll give you a follow. Who's that? Get out of here. Oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? I had the thing pinned. It was pinned. Where, there we, there, Keith, there, Keith, there we go. Thank you for that. I'm gonna give you a follow. 16 followers. You got paint with Josh as a follower now because you reminded me to, uh, to do the spray bit, right? So we're gonna take our little, little teeny tiny fan brush and come over here into that liquidy white runny pile of paint. It's right there. I'm going to dab it up and then, best part, just blast it. Oh, seriously, my whole, my favorite part about the whole thing is blasting it with paint like that. So thank you for reminding me to do the wave spray. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate it. Amazing work as always. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bam. It's hard to tell when to stop spraying it, right? Like, when do I stop having fun throwing paint at this thing? So, well guys, this one turned out fantastic. It's uh, just about 9.30, so we did a, what was that, 80 minute show. That's not bad, 80 minutes? That is not bad if you ask me. A little 80 minute painting. So, now um, it's time to decide what what um, what size do we do next? You know what I mean? Hey, cousin, what's happening? Uh, you know, what size do we do next? No one knows for what now? Who got, oh, uh, for who got the painting. I know, I, well, we, don't, we don't give out real names, um, but they could come in and, and verify where they, you know, the state that they're from if they wanted to. But proud of you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Alchemist2077, appreciate it. Airy Fairy Faye just got here. Oh, what's happening? Anna just got to the show. What? Did you forget what day it was today? So it looks great. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're in Alaska. Does it look like this outside? Because, oh, man, it's so cool. Tanisha. Was that Tanisha? Oh, no, it says Tiffany Wallach. Tiffany Wallach says amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let's see. Bop, 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 bop. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Anna. I appreciate you guys. I love you. Love you, cuz. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Fire. I got water for the fire. If it's fire, we got water for it. We'll just psh, <laughs> splash it out. So uh, the, this one was like 450, I think, based on the size. Um, Alexandra Green says your artwork is impeccable. I love that word, impeccable. So yeah, this one was about 450. Uh, the next one, if we go, you know, the next biggest canvas I have would probably be about 400. Then we'll drop down to like 325. And then that one would probably be about 295. And then the smallest ones are about 225. So all depends on what we wanna do. And um, thank you, I appreciate that. So they, like I said, they normally sell during the live shows. They're normally gone. But look at all the depth right here too. Like I, it's so dark in here that you think this is the edge of the canvas because of the mountain, but it's not, it's over here. Give it a little spank. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but they're about the 225 for the smallest ones, probably up to about the biggest one we paint tonight is this one. Uh, and that was like 475. So um, all depends, but uh, let's see, inspired you to place an Amazon. Yeah, get your stuff. Let's get painting. It's gonna be awesome. Gonna be awesome. You gotta make sure you got the liquid clear and the liquid white though. Man, that stuff is vital. These two things, if you don't have these, doesn't matter what paint you have, doesn't matter what brushes you have, doesn't matter what canvas you have, if you don't have these two things, forget about it. Forget about it, because it ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. So, and you can use like linseed oil as a as a, a clear replacement. You could use linseed oil, but um, they're a lot of fun. And uh, we had uh, Airy Fairy Faye, one of the sister wife mods, right? She sent me a picture. Um, it was her very first one that she had did. She chose a Northern Lights one, very similar to this, without the mountains, just had trees in it. And it was awesome. You know what I mean? She never painted or hadn't painted in forever, never tried wet on wet and was able to come out with, at least her auroras look very similar to mine. You know what I mean? It's not about 
being, you know, or having overly talented people and then, you know, no one else can do it. And I'm here to show you everybody can do it and I can teach you every single thing, get you there. So let's see as far as, um, I still gotta figure out what the heck we're gonna eat for dinner. And a little bit of color over the sides here. There we go. I think I'm, somebody said McDonald's. I love McDonald's. I love Taco Bell though too. Oh, oh there we go. Very cool. A little bit of color on the edge. Nice and finished. And let's clean off the old palette. We'll be done with this one, guys. So, what should we come back and paint next? That's the question. Should we do a, hang on, let me get you some sizes to look at. Let me get you some sizes. Small sizes to look at. Okay, so we have in the Paint with Josh arsenal, right? Don't worry about this, this is a little, little happy accident. That'll be, that'll be covered by the sky. So we have an 18 by 24 inch black and white, right? A half and half ski. So, which basically means gorgeous sunset sky, deep, dark, shadowy bits of our ocean that you can retain, right? So we got an 18 by 24 half and half. We got the same size 18 by 24, all black. And then I've got uh, this 15 by 30 inch, right? So nice skinny. I usually put the big moons and then the waterfalls on big ones like this. Um, but yeah, little skinny canvas, or we could do a seascape that way. You know what I mean? Just like take the wave section and put it right here on this long canvas. Lots of stuff we could do with those. And then this one is, like I said, the same size, just about six inches shorter. So three on the top and three on the bottom. So if we did this one, right? This one's probably gonna be about 400. If we did this one, it's probably gonna be about 325-ish for the long skinny one. And then uh, bu -bu -bu -bu, it's probably 295 for both of the 18 by 24s, right? And then I've got 16 by 20s that we could do as well. They just, they're not very special. I don't do anything different to them. They're just normal, <laughs> just regular old canvases. So let's see who bought this painting. No one knows. They didn't come into the comments and claim it. Uh, they did message me over on Etsy. So we got to name it. We got to sign it. We got to do everything. And then I'll stick a cert of authenticity on it. And it's going to be fantastic. So waterfalls. You want to do what? You want to paint some more waterfalls? Those waterfall paintings, they keep selling. Every time I do one, it keeps selling. So you don't got to tell me to, uh, to do it twice. I'll do you know, like the, 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 the waterfall into multiple waterfalls like that. And we do like a couple little things. I'll do some waterfalls. You want me to do a waterfall? All right. So we'll say, what did I say for this one? 350? Whatever it was. I think I said 350. 350-ish. Whatever it is, plus tax and all that. So we'll do this one, right? Ooh, lake house in the mountains. That'd be cool. That's a cool, uh, it's a cool idea. So we'll do this tall canvas, right? This little 15 by 30 inch. And uh, it'd be between like 325 to 350. And we'll do, should we do blue and pink? Like it'd stick on this, you know, same thing. Should we do green? Like green and yellow? Be really cool, be really cool. Need about tree fitty. Just need about tree fitty. That's all we need, about tree fitty. So, about tree fitty. Waterfall with a sunset. So I would need to prep differently for that. Um, sunsets on a black canvas, they never look as bright and vibrant to me as they should. That's why we do, if I was gonna do like a wave, right? I'd have my black canvas section, but we'd have the bright area to do the sunset and keep it nice and gorgeous, you know what I mean? I don't like doing sunsets on a black canvas. Um, but we could do a giant moon. We could do like a, Do lots of stuff, literally, literally lighthouse off in the distance, rocky main shoreline. That'd be kind of cool too. That's a cool one. Let's see, lighthouses. If you get a lighthouse one, Cosmic Lighthouse is going to have to buy it before all of you, though, because she will swoop in there and get it. And she just spent four hundred dollars on the painting yesterday, so I don't think she wants to come in and do that again. <laughs> and she will not let a lighthouse painting go. So she look, she's laughing right now. She knows. She's like, please don't paint another lighthouse painting, like. I, I just bought that one and you're gonna you're gonna bankrupt me if I have to get another one. I have to have it. So babbling brook, that'd be cool. Triple portals. I'm obsessed and not sorry. That's funny. You know what's you know what's cool about Cosmic Lighthouse? The one that she bought last night, remember it didn't have a lighthouse in it. And I was like, if somebody buys this, we'll put a lighthouse in it. And then 
I think she bought it and I think I had to go somewhere. Something, something happened. We didn't put it in. So I messaged her and I, I said, Hey, do you want me to put in that lighthouse? And she goes, honestly, it looks awesome the way it is. And I was like, you are the best client ever. <laughs> so that one didn't have a lighthouse in it. So maybe I put a lighthouse in this next one. She might have to get it. I'm just playing with it. Cosmic waterfalls. Cool. Oh, I had to go to Target. That's right before it shut. Thank you for reminding me, Virginia. Virginia, I appreciate you and your memory because mine is shot. <laughs> so we got a tower, we got a forest. Those are all very neat. Got a new, let's see, all good ideas. Um, but yeah, all right, I'm gonna get out of here though because always, we always do this. I always sit here and chit chat for too long and then we never come back and do another painting. Um, yeah, because you know we always take up too much time. So I'm gonna go try to get some food. I'll do a little bit of editing. And then uh, maybe we'll come back a little bit later on and do this 15 by 30. Let's take this sucker down. Ooh, there we go. Take this guy down. All right, get him over into the drying section. And then you guys wanted this 15 by 30, which means I'm gonna have to either raise this bit up. Or I'm gonna have to bring it down. Oh. I guess it'd be all right. I guess it'd be all right. I had this, this easel starting to come apart. So I've had to like screw it together. Every time I put a new size canvas on there, I have to screw it in. And that way the bottom doesn't fall out. So we'll keep it like that just to make it easier. Make it a bit easier. There we go. Or just. Ah, there we go. All right. Well, Bon Appetito. Hey, London, what's happening? We were just talking about, we just sold this giant painting, London. Look at this. Look at this beast. Ba Boom. This thing's humongous. Freaking ginormous. Oh, what time are we coming back? I don't even know what time it is. I don't have my watch on. You guys are on my phone. It's 9.30 right now, so... I hate these late night shows. Man, probably, like, I usually need like 90, especially if I'm going to eat, I usually need like 90 minutes in between. Um, so we'll call it 11, call it 11 on the West Coast, which means 2 a.m. on the East Coast and uh, 1 a.m. if you're Central Time. So I know it's late, but uh, tomorrow I have the day off of my uh, day, you know, my day job. And um, we'll come on and we'll do more shows tomorrow too. So 11. Um, it's 11.30 where you're at now. So yeah, it'll be another, it'll be one o'clock, 1 a.m. Uh, when we come back. So, but if we're going to do that, I got to go and I got to get some food, get it ordered. And, uh, you know, maybe London wants to come have McDonald's and bring McDonald's. Then we have some McDonald's, London. Double cheese, fries, and a uh, shake. Yeah? No? Okay. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to uh, go run and try to eat and, uh, yeah, eat well. McDonald's is not good food, but come on, London. London, please bring him a cheeseburger to your ex-husband, please. I still love you, London. <laughs> cheeseburger, <laughs> double cheese, please. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get out of here, guys. And uh, yeah, if uh, you're still awake when I get back, then we'll see you then. No, I'm tired. Boo. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye-bye.